Hey yo captains, how's it going bros? So as I mentioned yesterday in our Geeks video about why airlines should buy the 797, well I'd like to continue this by releasing this video. Also if you have any other suggestions then be sure to let us know. Also I just want to put it out there that you guys might have noticed that another channel has released a video on the A380 Freighter yesterday. Now I'd just like to say that this video was actually written before that and the blog post was written on the 19th of May, which was yesterday, and their video was released a day later. But anyways, <laughs> I hope this video can give you more information on the A380 Freighter. So the A380 is the world's largest aircraft, right? And it has a wingspan which is 10 meters longer than the 747. And we know that Boeing has built five versions of the Freighter from their commercial line. But why doesn't the A380 serve as a good Freighter and why don't the economics work for the plane? Well, let's see. Now I just want to put it out there and say that it's pretty obvious that the A380 freighter wouldn't work. However, this video will go more into detail of the reasons to explain why. And there might be some reasons you might haven't thought of. So basically, air freight is measured in two ways, cube and weight. Now cube refers to the volume of freight and also when it is full in terms of volume but hasn't reached the maximum weight. Now the A380 however would become too heavy to fly before it was filled so that's a lot of wasted space. So let's compare the A380 freighter to the 747-400 freighter. Now the 747 has a maximum takeoff weight of 448 tons compared to the A380's 575 tons. Also the 747 has cargo capacity of 710 cubic meters to the A380 freighter's 1134 cubic meters. Now the A380 freighter would be able to carry 60% more volume than the 747 but that's only 28% more weight. So what is called the limiting factor here is weight. Now the A380 is much better adapted as a passenger plane than a cargo plane. To see why it's worth talking about the market conditions and looking through the history and the development of the aircraft. In the 90s Airbus and Boeing saw two trends in commercial travel. Passenger aircraft was growing and so was the demand for more fuel efficient planes. However, Boeing and Airbus found completely different solutions. Now, Boeing analysts thought that second-tier cities would rise in importance because there would be more room for growth in emerging cities than larger ones. It also decided that second-tier cities would be connected by smaller, long-range planes. And as a result, Boeing invested in the 787 Dreamliner, which was capable of unlocking smaller market routes. So this was the point-to-point -point model of aviation. However, Airbus loved the hub-to-hub -hub model, they saw that airlines would need very large planes to help them bring in more passengers when availability of slots was restricted. They also believed that airlines would want to pack as many passengers as they possibly could to alleviate this problem. So henceforth the A380 was born. Now if you want to see why it works so well, check out the last week's video which talks about how Emirates can operate so many A380s. Now there's no denying it that the jet has been relatively successful considering how many aircraft have been sold, though in comparison to other aircraft, myself and many others consider the A380 to be a failure. But what about you guys? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below guys. Now Airbus is slightly behind when it comes to air cargo. The number of passenger flights is set to double by 2034. However, the number of cargo flights will increase at an average of 4.7% over the next 20 years. Now airlines usually prefer smaller aircraft on cargo routes and the passenger configuration of the A380 still has significant capacity for cargo. Now even though the A380 freighter will only be a concept plane for now, it will still be able to take some of the growth of air traffic over the next few years.